Prodigies never have it easy. They are constantly compared to their more experienced peers and still inherit every issue their team is already facing. The trolley team in a sense that they're just playing for like fun and they're super, super skilled, but most of the time they're just kind of going with whatever you know, they feel like. I think Cloud9 will win. The fans talk about the favorites usually being like Cloud9 White, Team Liquid. But a prodigy also comes with a promise. A promise of growth, improvement, of new horizons. I think it's a perfect fit because she came into a winning team already. She exactly. had all the potential and she had the perfect base. So I'm really excited to see how she does at LAN, especially with like the veterans beside her and see how that kind of goes. Going into Valorant Game Changer's first ever world championship G2 Gozen's Mary was young and inexperienced. Many weren't sure she was what her team needed to win, but when it mattered most, she was the one who truly showed up. Mary with the headhunter oh, and Hacker oh, one. Mary, what an absolute oh my two God. for Mary. TP potentially taken. They did. Oh Mary my God. For Mary. Benita on the chopping block is Giuliano hunting her down once again, but she succeeds. And now it's all on one KP. He's gone! And G2, a lifetime of greatness forged in finals like this. Before we get into it, I wanna give a huge thank you to Elgato for sponsoring this video. Thanks to them, our team was able to travel to Berlin to experience Game Changers in person, talk to the players, and get up close to all of the action. Elgato also hooked me up with a remote studio so I could keep up my content grind all of the way on the other side of the globe. Lights, mic, stream deck plus, it all came in the suitcase with me to Berlin and into my hotel room. So a huge thank you to them again. All right, so G2 goes and dominated Game Changers EMEA scene for basically as long as it existed, winning three consecutive championships. TV over from Omen, the smoke down. Should be still a paranoia to play with. Indeed there is. They need to decide where to put that though. It's left side and it opens it up for Giuliano. She can fade out potentially still with a dash to play with. Final four dashing in to try and find the final. And Ace no way. close things out. G2, once again, the champions. Now, if you're at all familiar with the core of this roster, it makes sense. Giuliano was a legend in the CS scene. She is the most decorated woman in Counter-Strike history, and her jump to Valorant was seen as a chance to lift even more trophies. Meanwhile, Mimi, Petra, and Zaz all played alongside each other back in their CS days, and when Valorant came out, they jumped ship to Riot's new tax shooter together and got picked up by G2 in October 2021. From the start, it was pretty clear that the decades of shared experience between these players were priced when it came to competing in a new game. The experiences on that roster, um, along obviously Giuliano, the one to kind of lead that uh, for G2, someone that you, you kind of feel very safe from a, from a team standpoint that, that they're in good hands. Again, many accolades to discuss of, of, as part of that roster. Uh, so I think there's very few other Game Changers teams you can really put into either of those umbrellas in terms of the track record and the experience um, and the success actually. Uh, that some of the individuals have. But despite all of their successes, G2 kept making changes. First, they brought in Glance to replace Anya, and then in May, Zaz retired. I mean, Zaz was a major part of why we were winning so much and so dominant. Like, she, she is such a good and always been one of the best, like, if not the best aimer in the entire game. Losing a veteran like Zaz was a massive blow that left everyone wondering who could even come close to replacing her. There were plenty of great players already within the EMEA scene, but G2 took a risk on an up and coming talent. Mary was a 16 year old demon from Bahrain who caught G2's eye at previous Game Changers events. And although she had some pretty big shoes to fill, she was in good hands. When Zaz wanted to retire, she particularly also mentioned Mary that if there was someone she wanted to replace her, it would be Mary. And then that started the whole thing. Some of us had played with Mary already on the free time and she's such a sweet girl, so, and she has a lot of talent, so there was no doubt that 
that's why we got married. So I think experience more often than not will will kind of shine, uh, especially internally as well. You look at G2 as well, there's a ton of experience there, but then they have Mary. Mary's probably in the best hands possible in, in terms of that roster to have people to keep her on the straight and narrow. But it wasn't just Mary's gameplay that made her the right fit for G2. Her personality also helped her mesh with her much older, more experienced teammates. She's so funny. Like, you know, she turned 16 this year. There's there's like, so, she's so different from us because we're so much older than her. Like our youngest is eight years older than her. So we were already in school when she was like still in the <laughs> belly, right? So she brings a lot of youth and humor and energy. And that's just perfect for our team. So even though they had a relatively new player in their midst, heading into Game Changers 3, G2 looked pretty unbeatable until they lost. Can they shut the account down? Get this game over with. It looks like Roxy wants it done with. She wants to move on. Next map, put it up. Mary down on five HP. This feels like a formality and Guild finally breaking in. Too little time, too few chances. Nine seconds now. The clock is their biggest enemy. Try to get the plant through. It's a one for one trade. Five seconds. I think it's all over. There's no time! The plants can do nothing about it. The plant's not gonna happen. And Guild steal the crown from the queens of EMEA Valorant. Guild dethroned G2, and Mary came up short in her first big grand finals match. This loss left people questioning G2's decision to pick her up. Their track record was relatively flawless before Mary joined. Maybe she just wasn't ready. Despite the loss, G2 still had a spot at the Game Changers Championship in Berlin. But Guild were the number one seed from EMEA, and coming from NA, Cloud9 White looked unstoppable after winning all six domestic titles. They were the favorites to win the entire tournament. I think Cloud9 will win. The fans talk about the favorites usually being like Cloud9 White, Team Liquid. And to make matters worse, G2 were on a collision course with Cloud9. If both teams won their opening matches, they would have to face each other on the first day, a match everyone thought Cloud9 would win. Both teams dominated their respective first round of opponents. It wasn't even close. But Cloud9 were still the favorites. Their structured playstyle gave them unparalleled consistency, and many people thought that their experience in the VCT main circuit gave them an edge over G2. Cloud9 are ones that have broken through in terms of competing in some of the, the, the co-ed tournaments or even trying to get through the VCT circuit and actually placing pretty well in some of those, beating notable kind of tier two teams. Um, I even spoke to um, some of the, the Cloud9 support staff, and again, they're, they're, they're purely scrimming against uh, male teams from the VCT circuit, be that tier one, tier two level. Um, and that's, that's quite a big difference. There aren't many Game Changers teams doing that. The series started off as most people expected. C9 took their map pick ascent with relative ease, but G2 bounced back. Juliano's Reyna was just too much for C9 to handle on Breeze. ADSing with the oh, shock dart, Katsumi combo. gets the kill, but that's Juliano also at orange. She had a great spot in the fourth position. Looks for the last two. As somehow the communication was in there. Somehow Juliano gets a 4K into the round and the Red Bull clutch. Map three went to Pearl, a map C9 had never actually played in an official match. Everyone wondered what the NA squad had up their sleeve, but it was actually G2 who threw the curveball. I'm totally on board with Zinyani here. I think it's so good at helping you scale down ah, e long. Ah, what ah, is happening? Ah. <laughs> Oh, what am I seeing? Wait, G2 are so selfish. I'm like, don't look at them, and this is what they do. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is in fact a Yoru here. Um, <laughs> from Giuliano, the flashes for the team to pull up behind, and now she's been back at the site. Nightfall to come out too. Oh, wow. And she GPs all for B, my god. It's all a fake. Giuliano single-handedly with Petra are able to just sell the fake completely. Cloud9, they've all rotated. It's a free plant for G2. Glance, they gotta speed up the pace, so the sound cues are there for Cloud9. They've heard everything, oh. but Mimi! Oh. Uh, what a transfer, that's a Spectre Vance. Yeah, using it like a rifle, and now only one kill away from getting an ult, but instead it's just gonna be another wall to try to cross over, but this is, should have a gap. Oh my. And she's looking for the last kill. It's gonna be Mel. Only with oh, the Gordon, oh, and she gets it! Allow that. 
to come up, and Petra, oh here is a spray, swings out from the control. There's only 10 seconds left, and the Dimensional Ten Drift seconds. on top of that to get all that information. Alexis Elise gets the kill off the glass, but the push out, there's no time! Jimmy, Mimi comes out to get the last two kills, and G2 wins the series! G2 dominated C9 by playing smarter and using unconventional comps to their advantage. I mean, we knew that this would be like probably our hardest matchup, and winning it in the fashion we did just feels amazing. I, I, I literally cannot say anything else that, that is amazing. But the bracket wasn't over yet. G2's win against NA's best team set the stage for an upper final matchup against the Brazilian powerhouse Team Liquid. A victory there would guarantee G2 a top two finish at the event. Still, there were some question marks surrounding Mary. Sure, she was playing well and G2 were winning. She just wasn't taking over games. It seemed like her inexperience was getting in the way until she finally popped off. Mary. You can see if Mary does get controlled here. It's not going to be the case. Mary with the head up to oh, her oh, Mary! One. What an absolute oh my God. round from Mary! Now they don't predict the timing on this one, but the defuse, they can't stop it in time. This has been wondrous <laughs> from Mary. Popsy on Naxi trying to play to the timing. All now drops. Where is Giuliano? Gone! Makes the appearance! And G2 make it to the grand finals, feeling destined for it. Mary showed up against Liquid. She silenced her doubters with a dominant 2-0 in front of the home crowd in Berlin and earned a rightful place in the grand final. Mary was beginning to prove that she could hold her own in a team full of decorated veterans. But as the tournament went on, G2 weren't just receiving praise for their gameplay, Fans began to fall in love with the team's personality too. You are my fire, the one desire. You're good. You're great. You're great. You're great. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're good. You're insane. You're insane. In the head. True. <laughs> G2 is also a formidable opponent. Um, they know the game and they have incredible focus and I think they are um, also an inspiring presence in the region as well. Watching Mimi grow has been amazing. She is a wonderful, charismatic individual that I think also represents what more women in the ecosystem will bring, which is, I think, interesting gameplay, but also an incredible vibrance. Many of the home crowd fans were cheering for the EMEA squad at this final hour, but their opponents, NA's Shopify Rebellion, were coming off an incredible lower bracket run. Shopify surprised everyone by taking down their long-standing rivals, Cloud9, before winning a rematch against Team Liquid. With their coach suspended for the grand finals, the underdog aura surrounding Shopify was intense. And they too had a teenage superstar in their ranks who was fighting to prove herself on the game's biggest stage. Sonder looked unstoppable. Three players on the flank, ult coming in. There's the showstopper, Sonder through, but look at the combination. Stunned up, ult through, she's stuck, but still finds one onto Daiki in heaven. Teal are trapped, they need to fight through this smoke. Flash in, Sonder, there, sprays away. Sonder! Three out of Sonder, another flash. Can they make it out? Absolutely not. Sonder shutting it all down, and she'll need the ace. One versus one, it's Bastarda on the other side. The spike planted in the open. Sonder is there! An ace for Sonder, a map for Shopify. Who can stop her? Absolutely no one. The grand finals were set. Two teams trying to prove that they were more than their losses during the season. Two prodigies facing off against one another amongst the veterans. This was not going to be easy for G2. The grand finals were shaping up to be a clash of NA and EMEA titans. Both rosters had solidified their spot as the best teams from their respective regions, taking down some of the strongest opposition in the world along the way. And although this was the first Game Changers International final, there was a lot of history between G2 and Shopify. Giuliano and Benita had faced off against each other in four previous grand finals back in their CS days. And Giuliano wanted to win in their first big matchup in Valorant. But this wasn't just about the veterans and their long-standing rivalries. This was also a battle between two young stars, Mary 
and Saunder. Only one could come out on top. And once the match got started, things didn't exactly go G2's way. Glory though, she's playing the corner. Oh, oh my God, God. Glory! I have never seen anything so clean. Still need to clear this back line. KP, Benita, Flaufel, all sitting this side. That's massive. That should at least catch two, maybe not the third. And Glance pushed up at the same time. Flaufel holding the line. Diffuse started. Giuliano needs One support here. And where was Petra in this? Well, she wasn't alive anymore. Benita's got her dead and Shopify Rebellion. That's map one. Should she stay or should she go? She tries to stick around a little longer here, trying to slow down Giuliano, who what? you got to turn around and pay what attention. Is that? Oh my god! Sogna! Oh dearie me! Leaves him in tatters! Big trade for Petra. And uh, showing the back, Benita still standing, still alive, still breathing. Mary with it all to do. Oh my god! Oh, Mary trying to do it all! Try to let Benita! Benita! Big game! Benny is in the building! Shopify Rebellion! G2 were one map away from losing it all. The first two maps were close, but teams aren't remembered for being second best in a close grand finals. Everyone remembers the champions. So if G2 wanted to etch their names into Valorant's history book, they needed to come back swinging. And on Ascent, they clawed their way back into the series with some pretty incredible rounds. What does Mary go for? Quick handling of the door though, this is hard. Smoke towards main. And the readjust towards dice. TP potentially taken. They did. Oh, oh the my God! From Mary does have support as well. Glance trying to pull all that attention. Prowler goes in, does not find Mimi. Mimi is now just going to TP oh my God. in the corner. They don't know she's there. And Mimi with the worst surprise possible denies them all. This one doesn't even get Mary. Will be found by Mimi. It's 13 to three. It's quick and it's deadly. G2. Not out of it yet. Then once G2 really got moving on Icebox, they never looked back. Mary and Giuliano. It's Giuliano to pull out KP, but it's Mary to find him. Flowerful now, last one alive. How much can you do here? Already spotted by Mary. They're toying with her. 13 to 2, G2. After getting crushed on maps three and four, Shopify's mental was shot. And the stranglehold that G2 now had on the series continued on Breeze. And now the advantage sits with Shopify until then, Mary beheading KP. And it's all in the hands of one, Flowerful. With it all to do here, shot's gone. The second shot goes as well, and it's absolutely falling to pieces, G2. Nine flash actually come now for Mimi to try and set this in motion from oh. backside. Petra's found one. Should never have found someone at that point. Petra's found one. Oh, no! No, not like this! Not like this! This is not how you get to double digits. They're just giving them hope to tear it away from them. KP 29 no HP! Way. G2! How are you doing this to them? Tournament life on the line, and KP is still trying to fight the good fight for them. Spike now in. Try to send Hunter's Fury Benita on the chopping block. It's Giuliano hunting her down once again, but she succeeds. And now it's all on one. KP has gone! And G2, a lifetime of greatness forged in finals like this. G2's triumph in the Game Changers Grand Final was Valorant's first ever reverse sweep at a major event. The combination of resilience and experience G2 displayed was proof that they had what it takes to challenge any other team out there. And through it all, Mary was the one who stood out. The 16-year-old prodigy popped off. Anything you want to say to the to the Mary um, party as well watching at home? Um, shout out to my country, Bahrain. I'm so happy to represent the Middle East, like especially my country and all the other Middle, Middle Eastern girls. You can make it. Damn right. If you, if you, if you, if you put something in your head, a vision, a goal, whatever it is, you can always do it. Just believe in yourself because I made it today and I can't believe it. Hell yeah. And beyond G2's amazing victory, Game Changers Berlin was also an incredible celebration, not just for women and marginalized genders in Valorant, but for esports as a whole. It was the most watched tournament in the history of female esports and helped show the world that there are plenty of amazing teams and personalities beyond the traditional Valorant circuit. Mary's story stands out as an example of the kinds of incredible things that come out of giving women and marginalized genders the space they deserve in esports. And neither Mary nor Game Changers are stopping anytime soon. 
Hey guys, before you go, don't forget to check out Elgato's new Stream Deck Plus in the link below. And thank you so much to Elgato for an amazing time in Berlin. I tried strudel.